In this video on Debaku University, you will learn how to use bone analysis to determine age, how we can use simply looking at the bone to determine the age of the individual. So first off, in the matrix, bone cells uh, are surrounded by a matrix, which is a non-living hardened material, which they produce. This matrix is composed mainly of calcium and phosphorus compounds, along with proteins that make bone hard and slightly flexible while still maintaining a very strong structure, uh, because it is supporting the entire body in this case. It needs to be hard, but it does have a slight degree of flexibility to it. We always think of it containing calcium, which it does, but it also contains high amounts of phosphorus uh, for the body. The calliculi are those are microscopic canals between the leucine and the ossified bone. Uh, so when we're looking at a microscopic view of the bone here, we can start to see some of these structures. We have this kind of cementing line evident here, the osteons and the calliculi are kind of those little canals we see here, and then the leucine are, are located right here. Um, and this can be important when we're looking through a microscope to be, use these to be identify the age of that individual. When we're looking at these bone cells, keep in mind that we do have bone that's constantly being reformed and bone that's constantly being broken down no matter your age. The age of the individual will influence uh, the rate that this occurs. We have the osteocyte, which remains uh, bone tissue. We have the osteoblast, which forms the actual matrix that I talked about. The osteogenic cell, which is the stem cell, kind of that early on cell that's going through and forming many of the rest. And the osteoclast, which is reabsorbing uh, bone material. Um, and all these are kind of occurring ideally in a nice balance for the individual. The histology, or looking kind of at the microscopic view of compact bone, just to kind of give you that, this is looking at 10x of ground bone here, uh, what it can look like, and kind of what we're focusing on. The Havarian uh, uh, canal is what we're going to be looking at here. We could see, looking at this bone here, it gets a little confusing. But looking at his varian system here, we can really focus in on that. And this is the area within a field of view that we're going to be looking at. So to determine that approximate age of the individual, looking at the number of osteons present in bone sample, taking measures of the varian's canals uh, diameters can also be useful. We use this information to calculate the estimated age of the bone sample, um, ideally at the time of death here. Uh, and that can be used on a skeleton uh, that we may not know. The height of the individual may know very little about it. This is looking at that very small, we don't need a very small portion of that bone, a bone fragment, to be able to determine the age. Looking at the image right below me here, looking at an x-ray of the hand of a 16.27-year-old male with an automatic calculation of bone age with uh, the bone expert. It kind of puts uh, some measurements there, puts some uh, kind of calculations, and puts it into an algorithm and generates an estimated age based on a simple x-ray. Now these osteons that I had mentioned, they're thin and long cylindrical structures. Uh, that contain mineral matrix and living osteocytes connected to the calliculi, which transports blood. These are solid portions of the bone and run its length and are easily viewed with a microscope, which is why they tend to be used uh, as part of this calculation process. So you can see them kind of represented in the cartoon image here, but on the other images you can see them quite clearly. When we're looking at that microscope, what are we looking at? We're going to be counting the osteons. We want to use the bone specimen so it completely fills a medium power or 100x field of view. Count the total number of osteons present in the entire medium power field. Now keep in mind the medium power objective lens here uh, would be 10 because we also have to take into account the microscope we're using, not just the objective lens here. So how do we go about that? Well, keep in mind we want the objective, but we also want to take into account the eyepiece as well. Typically, you're looking at uh, the eyepiece adding about 10x to that. So in that case, where I want medium power looking at 100x, while the objective is 10, because the eyepiece adds another factor of 10, that would be how we would get to 100x. If we use high power, 400x, that would be the 40 times 10 would give you 400. This can determine the number of ASEANs present by using the uh, variance uh, canals present. If only half of a canal is visible, then you count it as a 0.5 or half an ASEAN. 
We're going to move the sample to 10 new locations and repeat the process to get your data. Uh, then calculate the average number of ostions viewed under the high power to the hundredth place. This is again another way you can go through and do this is multi and go and do 10 samples. Lastly, you want to multiply the average by 16 to generate the total number of ostions counted under medium power, which is needed for the age calculation formula. So you can use the high power, um, just take more samples and multiply it by a factor of 16. How are you going to use this information? And what does it look like? Well, the center of each ostean is a hollow tube called that Hefarian uh, canal there. It contains small blood vessels. So that's kind of what you're looking at, that kind of center region there. Um, that's where ideally the blood vessels would be present in the individual. Now the diameter of that canal region, easiest way to calculate the diameter is to use the pointer found in the microscope. So that kind of pointer there, and depends on the microscope you're using, but that pointer sometimes will even have a measurement. You can also place a fine scale ruler under the microscope to calibrate the length of that pointer for the microscope that you're particularly using. Note the magnification will alter the scale, so make sure your calibration and magnification are the same. Uh, recommend using typically 400x, which is high power is recommended. Measure seven random uh, canals, not the entire ostean, under high power using micrometers. Uh, and note that 0 0.1 centimeters is one millimeter, and that equals 1,000 micrometers. And then you want to calculate the average variance uh, canal uh, diameter here. And that kind of gives you an idea of that um, increased magnification, how that's going to alter your scale. So kind of when we get to the end here, how do we kind of apply that formula to, for age calculation procedure? Well, we take 30, we add it to the total number of ostean count in the entire 100x field of view times 0.8, and we subtract it by the 0.3 times the average of varying uh, canal diameter in micrometers. We take that, uh, those numbers, and that will give us the approximate age of the individual by plus or minus three years. So if you go back and kind of look at the information presented here, uh, get a, uh, a couple of bone slides, look under the microscope, get the calibration used to the microscope that you're using, and you could kind of go through and do this activity to be able to determine the age of the individual bone that you're looking at, plus or minus three years, which is very good for getting a general classification of that age of the individual it can definitely help the investigation process.